أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلوات وأتم التسليم على أشرف خلق الله محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين As Muslims we love and respect the Holy Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم and we also want to find out as much as we can the events that surrounded the beloved Prophet's life. We want to understand more about his personality, whether it be his public life or even his private life. And we want to emulate and we want to follow in the footsteps of the Holy Prophet. We want to make sure that the information we also have about him is as authentic, as genuine as possible, as accurate as possible. One of the events that is extremely important, very significant for all of us Muslims is the event that happened at the end of his beloved life. And this event is the event of Ghadiru Khum. So much so that he had announced, the Holy Prophet had announced that this is going to be Hajjatul Wida' the last Hajj pilgrimage of the Holy Prophet. And it is for this reason that there was an increase in the number of people who participated in the Hajj pilgrimage at that year. Now, as important as this was, something that coincided with the event of Hajjatul Wada is the event of Ghadiru Khum. I'm sure all of you have heard about uh, Ghadir Khum, I'm sure that you've done your reading and researching about it. And therefore, there's no need for me to um, define what Ghadir Khum was. Something that I would like to share on this very auspicious occasion, the Eid of Ghadir Khum, is a very important masterpiece, a important and important reference that can be used to further substantiate the argument surrounding Ghadir Khum that also signifies the authority and the status of Imam Ali alayhi salam. And we know, I need to be of course very very thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has allowed us to be guided on the path of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam and this is why we always say especially in this particular event Alhamdulillah alladhi ja'alana min al-mutamassikina bi wilayati Amir al-mu'mineen alayhi salam This masterpiece that I'm referring to is the encyclopedia of Al-Ghadir written by Al-Allama Al-Amini Let me introduce a little bit about Al-Alam Al-Amini Allah Ta'ala Alayh and also a little bit about uh, the book itself that we are referring to. Sheikh Abdul Hussein Al-Amini was born in Tabriz in the year 1902 and he passed away in Tehran in 1970 buried in Al-Najaf Al-Ashraf. Al-Alam Al-Amini spent his life studying Hausa studies um, mainly predominantly in Al Najaf al Ashraf, and of course reached high levels in not only Ijtihad but also mastering numerous sciences. He was a muhaddith, he was a faqih, he was a historian, he was a theologian, he was also a codicologist, which means that he was an expert in manuscript studies. One of the things that he wrote, and it said that it took him between 40 to 50 years to compile, was the Al Ghadir Mosu'a, the Encyclopedia of Al Ghadir Fil Kitabi Wa Sunnati Wal Adab. And of course, that means Al Ghadir in the Holy Book, in the Sunnah, and also in literature as well, which means that the Hadith. Uh, the Ghadir Encyclopedia encompassed numerous uh, sciences, covered many different issues and topics in this encyclopedia. It wasn't only the event of Ghadir Khum in the Holy Quran, for example, in the um, that can be um, made reference to in the Quran, 
but also in the Sunnah and also in literature as well, whether it be poetry or anything of that sort. Now, with the Encyclopedia of Al Ghadir, Al Alam Al Amini, um, first of all, exhorted his effort by trying to trace down the references and the sources that speak about Al Ghadir, first of all, in Iraq, and then after that, he left and traveled many different countries from North Africa all the way down to India, trying to uh, find uh, primary references that speak about the event of Ghadir Khum. So in his extensive um, traveling that he made, of course, this concluded with his magnum opus, which is um, now 11 volumes. Of course, in that period of time that it took for him to um, uh, compile the Mosua, the encyclopedia, there is important information that we're able to understand from it that has been mentioned. Number one, as far as him tracing back the primary sources that have mentioned the event of Ghadir Khum, where he counts 110 different companions through authentic chains, 110 different companions who have mentioned the event of Ghadir Khum in detail. So 110 Sahabis. Then he mentions the Tabi'een. And of course, we all know that they are people who were not fortunate enough to live during the time of the Holy Prophet or interact with him, but they were able to interact with um, the Sahaba. And he mentions 480 Tabi'is who have mentioned the details of the event of Ghadir Khum. After this, uh, he mentions the ulama, the early ulama, all the way down to his era, all the way down to the era, the time of al Alam al-Amini, who have written about Ghadir Khum. Whether they have written an independent work on Ghadir Khum, or whether within what they have written, they've mentioned the event in detail. And of course, um, 360 sources or books that have uh, been mentioned in this regard. Of course, many cases uh, can be mentioned in Ghadir Khum that also make reference to Ghadir Khum as an argument. And we know that Imam Ali alayhi salam uh, frequently mentioned Ghadir uh, as an argument in favor of him. Sayyidah Zahra alayhi salam also mentioned it. The likes of Ammar ibn Yasir Ridwan Allah ta'ala alayhi has mentioned it. And even people who were the adver adversaries of uh, Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. Amr ibn al As had mentioned it. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz had mentioned it. Al Ma'mun al Abbasi had mentioned it. Even there are narrations by Abu Huraira who speaks about um, Ghadir Khum. Now, just mentioning these particular references, but more important than that, Al Alam al Amini rahimahullah also made sure that he mentioned the source, the edition, and of course mentioning the edition is always very important because unfortunately in later editions there's been a lot of um, censorship that's happened, you know. Uh, we know that um, petrol, you know, uh, is so, so uh, valuable that it can even have the power of erasing history. So we're able to understand that unfortunately the more recent editions, a lot of things have been removed. So what something that Alam al-Amini um, did was he made sure that he mentioned the uh, particular uh, edition of what it is that he is making uh, reference to. Um, of course this is very important because sometimes you might come across someone who says, oh, well, it's not, it's not written in this particular book. And subhanAllah, mentioning um, references and things like that, we can see that the author of Sahih al-Bukhari, al-Bukhari himself, 
he doesn't make any mentioning of the event of Ghadir Khum, even though it has exceeded the level or the requirement of Tawatur, but yet he still doesn't mention it. It is said that he does, he did consider the uh, event of Ghadir Khum to be weak. And of course, even other Sunni ulama have condemned anyone who has uh, classified or who has graded uh, Ghadir Khum to be Zaif or weak. And they attribute that particular person to do so as being a Jahil and ignorant or a uh, fanatic. It's interesting to understand that um, such things have uh, been mentioned. And, you know, interesting is that, you know, the likes of, uh, of Bukhari, who didn't mention it, he mentions the most peculiar of things, like, for example, uh, monkeys uh, committing the act of adultery, but something like Khadir Khum he doesn't mention. You know, so here there's a lot of uh, irony um, surrounding uh, this. Now, when it comes to uh, Al-Alam Al-Amini Rahimahullah and this uh, encyclopedia of uh, Ghadir, Al-Alam Al-Amini faced many, many different challenges and many issues and problems as well throughout this span of, of what it is that he was working towards. And, you know, sometimes there were cases where people were uh, not willing to share the reference with Al-Alam Al-Amini. Some cases where they said that, yes, we can, we'll show you the manuscript, but you're not allowed to uh, write anything from it. So he had to use his God-given memory in order for him to be able to, you know, go back to where he was and write down the notes, whether it be a piece of poetry, whether it be a source, uh, whether it, whatever it may be, but yet it still did not dissuade him from being able to, alhamdulillah, produce to us this wonderful masterpiece um, that we have with us today. And of course, let's not forget that at that time in the uh, 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s, um, books weren't published on a wide scale um, the way we have them today. And so there were many cases where he had to make reference to a manuscript by traveling to Morocco or Egypt or Turkey or India or places like that. And that's why we can see that Al-Alam Al-Amini uh, has mentioned over 30,000 references that he's used. It's also said that he had to read over 10,000 books. And of course, you know, one example I'm able to give here is when he uh, does mention the event itself, you know, and when we look at um, the hadith of Man kuntu mawla fahada aliyun mawla, we can't just look at it that in itself we have to look at what happened before and also what happened after. You know, for those who say, oh, well, yeah, Mawla means um, friend. You know, just look at the irony here as well. You know, okay, so the Holy Prophet uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brought all these people. Uh, he had to wait a, a little, a while until people were able to catch up. And then he grabs the hand of Amir al-Mu'mineen Alayhi Salaam, raises it up high telling everyone, hey, by the way, uh, Ali is my friend. You know, what sense does that make? You know, and prior to that, he had said to the people, he had asked the people around him that, am I not uh, more worthy of wilaya over you than anyone else? You know, alastu awla bikum min anfusikum. And it was after the people replying to him, saying to him, yes, that's when, of course, he said, man uh, kuntu mawla. And then he said that those who are present, make sure that you inform those who are absent. And then he said, oh Allah, testify, oh God, bear witness that I have conveyed the message that Allahumma ballig inni 
Allahumma uh, ishhad inni balaght, you know, and all these other things um, that were said in, in, in this regard. And that's why Allah al Amini, among the many things that he does, is he presents 20 solid arguments that proves that this event or this statement is not referring to Imam Ali being the Holy Prophet's friend, but it is in reference to the authority, to the wilaya, to the masterhood, the master the, uh, of Imam Ali alayhi salam. And that's only um, taking, taken from these, let's say, four lines of uh, what it is that can be mentioned. 20 arguments uh, proving this very small statement, but this very small statement being mentioned by so many Sahaba, by so many Tabi'een, uh, prevailed in many, many uh, writings and things like that. It's not just theological writings or historical writings or poetry or literature, but it has become pretty much the backbone of what it is that can be referred to in favor, in merit, in virtue of Imam Ali alayhi salam. And this is why as Shia Muslims, we believe that this was pretty much the crowning ceremony of Imam Ali alayhi salam in his wilaya. It is uh, uh, seen as such because it wasn't the only time that Ima, that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had spoken about the status of uh, Imam Ali Alayhi Salam. That being said, of course, um, you know, with Al-Alam Al-Amini Rahimahullah, when he mentions the poets and he mentions these poets that spoke about this from the very beginning of uh, the event, all the way until his time. And of course, he discusses the, uh, the implications um, that this literature has as well. He also speaks about, you know, what happened after uh, in the Holy Prophet announcing the wilaya of Imam Ali, where people came to him and congratulated him and said to him, Bakhin, Bakhin, Leke. Uh, congratulations to you and I'm sure all of my brothers and sisters uh, know about that. All of this, the perseverance, the difficulties, the challenges, uh, the hardships that Al-Alama Al-Amini Ridwanullah Ta'ala Alayh went through all for the sake of preserving our heritage, all for the sake of proving this one event, that this one event in this colossal work because of how important Ghadir al-Khum is for all of us as Muslims, all for the sake of the wilaya of Imam Ali alayhi salam, all for the sake of making sure that we remember the legacy, all for the sake of uh, feeling that sense of iftikhar that we are affiliated to the wilaya of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Look at all these sacrifices and all of these difficulties that al alama al-Amini went through. And alhamdulillah, it was at that very time in Al-Najaf al-Ashraf where he also founded uh, a library called the, uh, the Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam library. In this library, he has over 70,000, and they still um, uh, exists until today, over 70,000 manuscripts in the library called uh, Maktabatu Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam. And if you're ever in Najaf, I would uh, recommend that you go there and also visit the uh, grave, the resting place of Al Alama al Amini, which is right next to uh, his library. So when we look at these sacrifices, when we look at the difficulties that our esteemed ulama went through to preserve our heritage, the least that we can do is also put some time in learning about this, in reading about it. Okay, if you're not able to read through the 
uh, encyclopedia of Al Ghadir, because Al Ghadir, by the way, it's not just talking about this particular events. You know, it talks about the events that surrounded Al Ghadir. It talks about the oppression of Sayyid Al Zahra alayhi salam. It talks about um, the historical events of Islam in general. It speaks about the Khulafa. It speaks about the uh, things that Imam Ali alayhi salam had to endure until his um, his own Khilafah and all of these things. So it kind of like gives you a good background understanding of everything that surrounded the uh, early stages of uh, Imama and also uh, Khilafah as well. So there are many things that we're able uh, to learn from this. That's why I'm saying that the least of what we are able to, to do in honor of our madhab, in honor of our heritage, in making sure that we keep this legacy alive and we're able to convey it to those after us, is not only educate ourselves about such uh, events like uh, Ghadir Khum, but also to learn more about it, to try to make sure that we educate ourselves and read uh, these particular books. You know, we know that the major problem that we have in today's society is people don't read as much as they used to before. So we need to go back to the books and read and learn and understand. And by doing this, we will become more familiar with Islam and also with Ahlul Bayt alayhum as -salam. Eid Mubarak to you all on this very happy occasion. The Eid al Wilaya, Eid al Ghadir, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to grant us tawfiq of making sure that we continue to align ourselves with Al Haq. And let's not remember, let's not forget that Ali and Ma Al Haq, Wal Haqu Ma Ali, Wa Akhiru Da'wana, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Wa Salatu Wa Salamu Ala Sayyidina Muhammad, Wa Alihi Tahirin.